Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to use Magic TLC Plus with me your host PJC. Today we're going to be looking at functions, what a function is and some of the basic um, uses of a function. Um, but to start with I'm going to explain a little bit about this tutorial series and where it's heading. So, so far I've just kind of been doing random little bits but I've worked out that the best way to show you how to build a scene is to build a scene. So each video from each week is going to increase and finally rebuild the lighting scene which is shown in episode zero of this season which is just showing you how to use a interface. So to start with I'm just going to open up uh, what we're starting with. So this tutorial episode number three. So here I've just added a bunch of light as we covered in the previous video tutorial and how to create one, so the Q beams 260s which we created last time. So the way I set these out is what's matching what's at search. So this is a picture from an Empower conference where we set these lights up. So we got two lights at the top here, two lights at the top here, two lights in the bottom panels there, two lights at the bottom panels there, two lights there which are the drum lights and then one two three four five or just off shot six bars going across there so those I'm referring to as the bar lights those back ones I'm referring to as panel lights and then we have three sets of bars going across the top so let's open up this excel sheet I'll put a link to this in the description um, here are all the different lights in roughly the right positions with uh, different channel numbers corresponding to them. So the very front house light there, number 13, is front house light there, number 13, and so on and so forth. So that's a little bit about the setup. So to make this easier to see what's actually going on with the lights, I'm going to go through how to use the monitor. So if we open up the monitor, we get this whole range of stuff. What this is, is basically showing you the name of the light. So we've got the bar lights there, and the house lights, and all the other different colour lights, and what the values are pumping out. So if I was to go into the simple desk and turn up channel 1, which is bar 1, the value goes up. So we can just change it up and down and just click that. So uh, what a better way to do personally for me is to have a visual representation of what's going on. So if we go into the 2D view we can see this grid where we can create lights going on to it. So if I press uh, the plus add fixture here I can select the six bar lights, shift selecting there and press OK and I can drag those into the scene it will tell me which one it is. So I can go back to my Excel sheet there uh, just spin that to the left hand side there. So I can see that's the left hand one. So 6 goes there, 5 there, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So now those are all roughly in position, which match up with what's actually on stage. I'm just going to go through and add it all to the scene file. So here I've added all the different lights in matching the Excel sheet roughly. So we've got the six bars at the front with all the different panel lights and the horizontal bars. I've just left out the ones which are not in use because we don't actually need to see them because it doesn't matter whether they're turned on or not. So I've just left them out. That's that. Um, so let's just talk about the fixture monitor for a little bit. So here we've got the grid size. So I've upped it so I've got enough grids to evenly space the lights out on and then you've got units as well um, here's the fixture button so you can add fixtures to it so let's finish this off by adding the two Q beams shift select those so now if I select one of these it pops up over here so I can move that into position so that lives about there we grab that one, move that into position yeah, that's there on the same side, so it's all nice and even. Here if you select the lights you can uh, remove the fixtures, you could set a background to this instead. 
And here is a really useful feature, is to turn the labels on. So you can actually see the name of the different lights, which is quite useful. Um, on the right hand side, when you select the light, you get a little panel up saying it's horizontal, horizontal and vertical position, as well as rotation. And you can also set a gel on it. Say if you had parkans with gels on, you could match the gels on there. So you can just get a nice representation of it. So let's move this out of the way. So now we've set up our scene, we can um, go into functions. So let's look at the most basic one. So the most basic one is the scene. So it will create a scene, they call it new scene. So let's call this um, all bars. Or get a nice name convention. So bars, so it's under a bars group, then all. So we can control all the bars. So if I press the add button, I can select these bars and then add all of those in. So we've got the individual bars on individual tabs. It's a little bit annoying to use, so I prefer to press that and it turns them you know, all into one tab. So now I've added them all in, we can just go through these top panels at the top. So the big tick um, just enables all the current channels, so it will turn all of these on or off. Well, turns all of them on and the big cross turns them all off. Uh, those two are for clicking through the tabs. Here we've got a section of copy and paste stuff which we will talk to when we get to the more complicated lights. Um, here we've got the speed dial. So all lights have a basic fade in and fade out time which is called to default by other functions. So if you want them to always fade in at one second or, and always fade out at one second, you can set this time here. And let me just turn it off. Um, here is blind toggle mode. So if I activate the, these bars and then turn up bar number one, which is that one there, you can see it's activating on screen. So say we were on plugged into the main system, you'd actually see these lights coming on. If you have blind mode activated though, you can have a show running and tweak these in the background and you won't be interfering with what's going on on stage which is really useful. So at the moment I'm just going to leave that off because it doesn't matter. So for this function I'm just going to turn them all on like that. So now we've got our first scene with all the bars on. Um, so I'm just going to create a couple more scenes with each individual light on. So here I've just created individual scenes with each bar turned on uh, one at a time. So let's move into the next function which is a chaser. So a chaser steps from one scene to another scene to another scene to another scene or vice versa depending on what some of the settings are. So if we go with this chaser let's call this a bar underscore run. So we're going to run through all the different lights. Uh, we can add functions to it so we can add these individual scenes. So it's going to step from one function to the next, to the next, to the next. So if we bring this up, uh, bring that there, and then play through this, see it blitzes through and just plays them all. That's because our fade and hold times are set to zero, so it's trying to do it instantaneously. So if we go into a stopwatch, we can change some of these settings. Uh, to, but as you see, these are both grayed out. This is because at the moment the fade in and fade out speeds are set to default. So it will be calling the default scene value which we saw earlier. So we can set these to common and then we can control these via these dials. If you wanted to you could set it to a per step basis and you could individually control how fast they each fade in and fade out. So I'm just going to set them to common for now so we can Play them all at the same time. So I'm gonna hold it for two seconds, gonna fade out for one second and fade in for one second. So now if I play through these, it will fade from one to the next to the next, all at the one second step. Which is really cool. So let's have a look at this. I'm just gonna speed this up so we can see the results a bit quicker. So um what is that? Split it to point five. 
So now I can just see that stepping through nice and quickly. But we can also have some fun with this. So at the moment it's stepping forwards. So we can change the direction. So instead of going from right to left, it goes from left to right. Um, so we just step that back to forwards again. We've got a couple of different run orders. So loop, it will continuously go down and do this forever. So it's a single shot, it will do it once and then stop. This is cool for some buttons where you just want to run a couple of lights and then stop it and say for running a flash or something. We've got ping pong, so if I start it playing again, it will go all the way to one end and then back again. And then we've also got random, so it will pick a random at a time. So let's just stop that. Those are the two simplest ones to get your head round and you can do a lot of stuff with that. In future tutorials, I'll be covering um, the effects uh, using collections and RGB matrices and maybe looking at some of these other ones. But for now, that's a good starting. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave comments down below. Give us a like if you liked it. Give us a dislike if you just hated the sound of my voice. Please subscribe if you want to see the next videos as soon as they become available. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time.